Hi everyone, it's Steph here from Chaos in the Craft Room. Thanks so much for joining. Today we're going to be going through what are the basic supplies you need if you want to get into card making. There are so many expensive, fancy gadgets out there and you really just don't need them when you're getting started just to see if you're interested. So I'm going to be going through that and then following on from that I'll go through how you can make cards with one ink pad of one like just one color and potentially a black ink pad as well in addition to one stamp set and you'll be amazed at how versatile they are and how many different looks you can get from them so if you like this video please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to see future videos and I am based in Australia so I'll let you know where I get my craft supplies from but if you're not in Australia that's fine there it's easy to get them online or most craft stores so looking forward to going through it all and keep in mind with the stamp set when you're buying your first stamp set you can always get a second hand one or borrow it from a friend or get them online from eBay or Facebook marketplace so um, it's so many options there. So let's get started. So the very basics of what you need is obviously paper. I love using 300 GSM paper, but that is very thick, really half that thickness is fine. And of course you can add on colorful cardstock or pattern paper as well. And then of course you'll need a guillotine or something to cut the paper with. So I like using a guillotine. It takes really large size paper, easy to trim down and I can mark on the spots that I like to use regularly. However, some people do find them unsafe, especially if kids in the house. So you can always get a paper trimmer and this one does have an extension for larger paper as well. The only challenge that I find with these types of paper trimmers is that the actual blade blunts really quickly and it um, it really has to be replaced quite frequently which does get quite expensive. So one of the basic household things that you will need with card making. So a ruler is always helpful as I tend to get things wonky otherwise. Uh, some scissors, also some sticky notes especially for the techniques we'll be using for the ink blending later and some double-sided tape or glue. You can choose what you prefer. You have a thick and thin double-sided tape, um, but you can use glue. Glue does give you a bit of wiggle room to move it around to get it all lined up and straight. This craft glue that I'm showing here, you can get from Spotlight or from Little Bits, which is the craft shop that I like to go to, and I just decanter it into a smaller bottle. When you do get glue though, make sure you do get an alcohol-based glue um, so it doesn't wrinkle the paper when you stick it down. Or this is a fast and tacky glue, which is also really good and it has a nice small tip for when I want to add on small little embellishments. It also has a thicker tip uh, if in, in case you want to use that as well. And next, wet wipes, of course, something to wipe up the mess, um, as that's what I'm best at doing. And some paper towel, which is not only good for cleaning up, but also for some of the techniques I'll show you later. Some paint brushes are always really helpful. And a sponge. So a sponge you can actually use with your ink pad as an ink blending tool or just to clean everything up as well. So that's what you need as your basic household supplies or you might need to get a few of those bits and pieces to get started. All right, so if you are going to buy one colored ink, I do recommend going for the Tim Holtz Distress Ink. Um, and that's really just because it's such a versatile ink and I'll show you how you can use it in different ways. And any black ink is a good bonus, but if you can only get the one ink, I'd recommend going for a color. And then you want to get an ink blending tool. So I like the mini ink blending foam and I have a different foam pad for each color ink that I have. But of course, if you don't have that, that's completely fine. You can use your paint brushes or even using the sponge, like I mentioned before, you can chop it up and make your own sort of blending pads as such. Okay, so you really want to get one stamp set ideally. So this is the stamp set that I'll be using today. It has a good range of pictures and just some random stamps that you can use for a background, but really any stamp set will do. 
Ideally, you can also get a stamp set of sentiments because it does really help with creating your cards, but it's certainly not essential. And if you do get them, you have to think about what size and style of sentiments you do want. But just remember, there's numerous different ways to get sentiments on your cards. You can just print them from your printer. Um, that's a really good way to start off initially without having to pay anything extra for it. But you can also use other things from craft shops. You can either buy them or you can even get rub-ons. They're really quick and easy and, and a fun way to add on a sentiment. Or otherwise, don't forget your sticker packs as well. They always have really nice sentiments in them as well. Or the 12 by 12 inch card papers that you can chop up for sentiments. So many ways to add a sentiment to your card without actually needing to buy the stamp sets themselves. So if you are going to get some clear stamps, you do need a stamping block so you can stamp it onto the card or you can get a stamping platform. But really to start off with, you really just need the stamping block. I've got my Misty, which is my stamping platform and I absolutely love, but certainly not essential. That's something you can think about down the track. Okay, and the other bonuses to have are, for example, a stencil, um, or you can create your own stencils as well, even just with scissors, or you could use paper punches. So I love using my paper punches um, to actually make my own stencils, as you'll see in the examples later on. Okay, and so the final thing we need to think about when we are making our cards is now that we've got our paper, we've trimmed it down, is how do we get a perfect score line to make the actual card base? So you can get a score buddy, which is another fancy tool, but does make it really easy. But you really don't need that. All you need is a ruler when you're getting started. So I'll show you this tool just out of interest in case you are interested down the track. So you really just score exactly where you want the card fold to be and that will give you an indent there just for you to fold over and then flatten it down. So it really makes it nice and easy and quick when you're making lots of cards. But you're going to see uh, very soon how easy it is without that. So all you need to do is mark exactly where you want the fold with the ruler and then keep the ruler there and just gently start pushing up the paper towards the ruler and pressing the ruler down so it doesn't move. And that will create a nice indent as well in the paper. And you can just follow then that, that crease that you've created to create the card fold itself. And then if you want to get some extra pressure on it, you can also use the ruler to flatten it down as well. But sometimes your fingers are enough as well. But with the ruler, it does give it a really nice, crisp, clean finish. And you can see just how nice that card base looks. So two easy ways to create our card base. So let's get started with the actual inking process. So with one colored ink, let's start off with using our sticky notes just to create some shapes in the background. So this is my mini ink blending tool and you just attach the foam there or you can use the sponge as I mentioned before. So let's start off with that one just to show you what it's like. So just stick down the sticky notes onto the paper. You can cut them, you can um, place them however you like. Just get really creative because really it's your imagination that will create the most amazing cards. And make sure you really do stick the sticky notes down quite firmly, otherwise you'll get the ink going underneath. So when you are using the ink, just remember the harder you press down, the darker the color will be. So just try and get either a firm application everywhere or shade it as you would like it to be shaded. The ink does stay wet for just a few seconds afterwards. So do be careful when you are pulling off the sticky notes. Don't touch the ink straight away as you will smudge it on your page. Um, just pull them off gently and, and don't touch the card for a few seconds and let it dry. I can be a bit impatient sometimes, but that is a very important step. <laughs> All right, so next up, we're gonna use just a scrap bit of white paper, which is something that, you know, I have lots of them lying around. And you can use that to section off different areas of the card and just ink up a certain section. 
Uh, for this example, I'm just going to create a few diagonal lines. And just make sure you do push down the paper, otherwise it will move. It's not as easy as the sticky notes that will stay there. You could do this technique with the sticky notes as well, but I just wanted to show you this example. And then just to give it a bit of something extra, I'm just inking around the edge as well. One of my favorite techniques. I do it on a lot of my cards and it just gives a really nice simple border as well. And there we are. That's our second background of our cards. So once I've created all these cards, I'm going to go through and actually show you the finished card that I've created with these backgrounds to show you how they look. As they might look simple here, but they look amazing once they're finished. And we'll go through and also use our stamp set on these cards. So don't remember, you don't need to go in a straight line all the time. You can get quite creative in the direction of your lines and you can section things off um, to any sort of shape that you want. And we're going to come in here later with different stamps and put different stamps in every section. And if you don't like the background completely white, just go in with your ink blending tool and add a bit, of, bit more color to the card. Once again, as I said, one of my favorite things of going around the edges and creating a nice border for the card. All right, so now we're going to create our own stencil with the paper punch. So I've used this one earlier and I'll just punch out the card. Or if you do have stencils, feel free to grab them as well. I just wanted to show you an example of making your own stencil. And just remember, if your paper punch only punches really close to the edge, that's completely fine. A lot of mine do do that. Um, but just use the sticky notes to section off there to make sure you don't get any extra ink on the sides. So you can really place this stencil anywhere on your page. This is just where I've decided I've wanted mine. I've gone through and made the whole background here quite dark. But we'll also come through and do an example with a bit more blending. So just to remember, the harder you push down, the more ink you're going to get on the page. And you can do the exact same thing uh, with your sponge as well. And there you have it. There's a the contrast and they look quite different, even though we're using the exact same ink, the exact same stencil, but it does give a different look. So next we're going to use the actual inside of the paper punch and we're going to hold that down. Just make sure it doesn't move and ink around it. And I'm just going in there to blend that out a little bit more because I thought there was a bit of a gap there. So next up, I'm going to use this stencil numerous times on the page. So we have lots of fun circles on the page. I really like this one. It's a fun sort of party look. Another fun card to use and I'll show you the cards that I make at the end. The other benefit of this ink, the Distress ink, is that it actually reacts to water. So this example, I'm just going to put ink all over the page and then come in. You can either spray it with a water spray or you can just use a paintbrush or your hand to flick some water over the page and then use some paper towel just to dry off the excess water. And that creates a really fun, easy technique background with a bit of texture in it. Now the paper does bend a little bit with the water on it, but just put something heavy on it for a few hours and it will flatten back down. 
And don't forget your ink pad itself is a shape in itself. So you can just use that depending how much ink there is on your ink pad, it will give a fuller or less full stamping image. But that's, that's a really fun way and one of my favorite ways to create backgrounds. And so now we're gonna come in with our actual stamps. So this is where I get my stamping platform as well. And I'm gonna do some stamping with the blue on blue or some with black on blue. So you can see the contrast. So ideally you could do this at the same time as when we created this background to begin with, if you are doing it with blue on blue and just stamp it numerous times just to get a bit of texture in the background. If you are gonna stamp on with a different color on top of it, I do recommend just waiting a few minutes to let the first color dry. But if you are doing blue on blue, it's, it's okay. If you are doing a certain image, sometimes you do need to let it dry as well as, as it can, the colors can weep. And sometimes I just do a little practice test run and stamp the image to the side just to check that the image comes out nicely. Now for this technique, I'm gonna go back to our sticky notes and actually section off certain sections. That way I can stamp each section with a different stamp. And it's a really fun look and you can create so many different backgrounds using this technique and they'll all look different depending what stamps you use and how. Just remember to stick down those sticky notes nice and firmly so they don't lift up. And you can use the second and third stamp without going back to the ink pad and it gives a lighter color in the background just to fill it in a bit more. And this is a really fun way to create a card with what you have. And it's quite a busy background so you just need to add a simple sentiment over the top and then there's your card created. So we'll come in now with the black ink if you do have a black ink. And remember, if you do have any black textures or good at calligraphy, you can always do that as well on top of the cards. And just remember, don't wiggle the stamping block too much if you have an image with some detail as it might smudge it a bit and you'll miss that detail in the card. But it's amazing to see the contrast of the two different versions that we have here on the screen um, using the same sort of stamps and colors. And here I've actually gone out and printed it from my printer with a sentiment already on it. So if you're someone who doesn't have any stamps of sentiments or anything to add on top of the card, you can just print them out. You can either cut them out themselves or actually make the card on that printed paper, depending what you prefer. And I'm just using a leftover scrap bit of paper here to block off a section to re-ink up and I wanted it a bit of a thicker line. So I went back and added the extra bit down the bottom. And once again, that fun technique with this ink is that it does react with water. So here I'm just smearing a bit of my ink pad onto my ink block and adding some water to it. And that's really just creating my own watercolor. And you can use that to color in certain images or you can use it for a background. And there we are, that'll make a really cute card. So now let's actually have a look at the cards that I've created with these. So the very first one where I've just sectioned off areas with the actual sticky notes, this is what I made and add a little sentiment on top with my paper punch. And next, these are a contrast of the cards that I made. I went and made an extra one as I just love this look. And just to show you the different look of if you added some, a border around it, or if you just wanna add a simple sentiment to make it simple and elegant card. 
And then these two here, I made one with a large sentiment and one with a small sentiment. So you can see the difference and see what you prefer or sometimes it's nice to have a combination if you are going to invest in some sentiment stamps. And here I've just ripped a bit of a sticky note to create these sort of mountain looking background that the birds soaring over. And this other card to the right, I've just colored in the paper punch circle. Here I've just gone and made an extra card. I've just cut out some squares using my guillotine or scissors and colored it in with the ink and added some ribbon. So really you can add anything onto your cards to give it a bit of an extra embellishment, whether it being ribbon or buttons. And here I've just added simple sentiments because I thought the background looked so nice and already had so much interest that I didn't need to add too much to it. And some of my favorite ones is with all the circles. I thought some fun little sequins because it's quite party look and don't forget you've always got stickers to add to the cards as well if you don't have too many embellishments you can add stickers to create some interest and dimension to your card this is the one where we sprayed with the water onto the background and I've just added a few sequins on there and a nice thank you and this one I've just cut out this sentiment I've cut out from a six by six inch paper pad and here I've just added a, one single stamp onto those cards there just to show you how simple a card can be but still looks so elegant. And this one I've used as my stamp and die set which I know we haven't covered in this video but it's something that you could think about potentially investing in down the track but you can see just how nice that watercolour is for a background Thanks so much everyone for joining today. I really hope you enjoyed that video. Give me the thumbs up if you did and subscribe to see my future videos. So my next video is going to be on Kendra's card challenge number five. It's a challenge where you're using six pieces of pattern paper to make 15 cards. And all you need for this is some pattern paper, some plain paper, and really a guillotine or scissors to cut the paper and something to stick them down. So really easy for new card makers or if you just want a challenge like me. So looking forward to seeing you there. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. I'll see you next time.